Hey everyone, I've been promising for a while now to make a video on my whole house power supply that I use for my home automation projects. So here it is. I'll get into the um, details on how I set it all up here in a second. But before I do, I just wanted to throw out a quick disclaimer that uh, if you are going to replicate this, try it at your own risk. I by no means uh, warranty this. Um, but I have been running it for over two years and it's been working awesome for me. So um, it's not like I just installed it a day ago and um, wanted to throw out a video here. So anyway, um, let me get into it here. So all I did was took a computer power supply. I'll show you how I set that up uh, after, but I wanted to go it through my whole system here first. So I just have a computer power supply and out of that comes 12 volt, 5 volt, 3.3 volt, and then I have my ground. So I wired in some additional wires because they weren't long enough uh, to get over here to my screw terminals. Um, but if yours are close enough, you could just use the existing wires coming out of your power supply. So you can see up here, I've got some, some screw terminals here. Those were just from uh, my local Home Depot or my local home goods store. Um, they're for a breaker box, so you can buy those for, I don't know, four bucks or something like that. And I just cut cut mine um, into pieces here so I could have a rail for 3.3, 5 volts, and then 12 volts over here. And then you can see my ground wire. I ran over to a, a ground rail here. Uh, for my ground wire, that wasn't long enough, so I just used, I think this is maybe 14 gauge wire, and then this is 12 gauge wire here um, going to my screw terminals. Next, um, we have some fuse block terminals. I, I'll put a link in the video description for where I got these. Um, they are just standard car fuse block terminals. So I just obviously have one side going there from my power supply, depending on which um, supply I need, which voltage I need. And then it goes into a, a fuse. You can get these fuses on eBay. I use between one and three amp fuses. I think most of them are one amp fuses. And then these wires go to my home automation projects. So um, you can see here I've got a number of different fuse blocks. Uh, and then my wires, I'll just zoom out a little bit here so you can see everything. Sorry, it's horribly messy, um, but oh well, you'll get the idea. So then most of my wires go up into my attic. Um, and then are routed um, from there to the specific sensors. Uh, I do have a 5 volt supply here, um, running the different sensors here in the basement, and then an Arduino Mega that's running um, a whole bunch of different contact sensors throughout my house. So to attach to the fuse block here, I just have these little connections. Um, got them in a bag of 100 for cheap. I don't remember what it was, but it's cheap. Um, then I just slide my wire in here, uh, crimp it down, and then I actually solder all my connections because I want them to be, um, I don't want them to come loose. Then they just slide up into here uh, on e each side. Uh, and then the wires, I usually try and match them or make them a little bit bigger than what's going up into my home automation projects. Um, so usually 16 gauge or 18 gauge wires. Um, I have yet to actually blow a fuse because of one of my devices malfunctioning. It's always been um, me screwing it up, miswiring something and blowing a fuse. Um, so basically, um, they're just a safety. Um, and it's also nice to be able to disconnect power just by pulling out the fuse to one of my devices if I want to reset it or do some work on it. I don't have to shut down my whole uh, power supply here to do that. I can just pull out each individual fuse. So over here, I'll just show you, I connected an Arduino. Um, when I first set this up, I was really nervous about it. Um, overheating, um, wasn't sure about the loads, things like that. So I put a temperature monitor uh, in there and then a relay that would shut it off. I've had no issues with that, so I don't think that's really necessary. Uh, if you did want to do something like that though, um, you could. I have uh, had this come in handy one time. I had it up near maybe 90 degrees Fahrenheit and I was like man normally it's in the 70s 
So I went down, checked it out, and my fan had actually stopped running. Um, I just cleaned it out, started running again, so still using the original power supply I've had in here for over two years. Okay, so hopefully you can see this, but I just wanted to show you this is just a cheap uh, 305 watt power supply that I pulled out of an old computer. So that's the total output, and then you can see uh, each power supply should have labeled what the output uh, amperage is. So a 5 volt channel gets 22 amps, which is a lot. Uh, the 12 volt, I can't see if that's a 16 or an 18, it's too small for me to read, but um, anyway, I just recommend uh, you obviously want to have enough amperage output for the devices you're trying to power. So if you're not doing any major lighting or uh, motor projects, you should be fine, but um, if you do a lot of lighting and motor projects, um, those can add up pretty quickly. So just make sure you have an adequately sized power supply. Okay, so here's a power supply. Um, this isn't obviously the one I'm using in production, but I have a spare here ready to go just in case. Uh, I haven't soldered in my extension wires yet, but I have taken all the wires out. So basically just cut off the connections, um, and then you get these multiple colors of wires. So black is ground. Uh, red is 5 volts, orange is 3.3 volts, and then yellow is 12 volts. Um, you can really easily see when you get into yours um, the, the solder connections. If you do need to extend it out, this brown is also 12 volts. Um, to make this power supply work, you will need to connect this green wire to a ground wire, a black wire. So just pull one of those off, splice it together. Uh, and then that will enable the power supply to run. If you don't do that, when you plug it in, uh, it won't run. It also does need a certain amount of load to run, um, but since I'm powering lights, blinds, other sensors, I've never had an issue with that, so I didn't need to connect in any additional resistors to have that load um, be what it needs to be. So these are the wires I use throughout my house. This is an 18 gauge, and there's two wires in there. And then here's a 16 gauge for higher amperage draws. Um, you will want to check out some calculators online though. There's both a voltage drop. So, you know, if you're running 12 volts and then you run it a 60 foot length or something, it will drop by maybe 0.5 volts. So, uh, you may need to use some buck converters or something at the end of your runs if you're running fairly far and maybe run at a higher voltage, say run at 12 volts and then uh, step it down to 5 volts when you get um, to the end of your run. So check out the calculators online. I'll put some links to some ones I used. Uh, and then also the um, amperage draw, it's relatively low for the lower voltage DC um, currents, or sorry, um, voltages. So my blinds um, are the probably the highest draw that I run. Um, and they're relatively low. I think they're about 0.8 amps. Um, so I can get away with using these wires. But you want to note that um, it's nothing like high voltage AC or higher voltage AC, say 110, 220, where you can get away with a 14 gauge wire to run a 15 amp appliance. Um, at the lower voltages, you need a much higher gauge wire um, to run it. All right, I just wanted to show you quickly. Here's probably the longest run. This is the blind in my master bedroom. Um, it's about 60 feet. I just wanted to show you what this looks like, how I terminated it. Nothing fancy, just use some wire nuts um, right into the wiring of my blinds. You can see I also have some Cat5 that I've run, and I use that for um, security sensors and um, future expansion, I guess. You can see I'm not using too much of it here, but that's what it looks like. So that's my whole house power project. If you have any questions, post them in the comments. Uh, like I said, I'll put some links in the video description for you to get uh, additional information. So check there if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.